developing right now. A 15 year old is found dead inside of a home in Anne Arundel County. His stepfather, a Baltimore police officer, now under investigation. Alexa Ashwell is live with new details on this case. Alexa. Yes, just hours ago, the Baltimore police officer was identified as Officer Eric Banks. We're told right now he's facing assault charges related to an Anne Arundel County police officer who we're told was responding to his home related to this welfare check to check on the teen. That's how we're told this all started. A welfare check turned into a deadly discovery. Forensic investigators spent much of the day combing through Baltimore police officer Eric Banks' home here in Curtis Bay after officers yesterday say they found his 15-year-old stepson unresponsive inside the home. The teen later pronounced dead. Let's not forget that that's a family that lost a child. But how? In Arundel County Police say the mother of the 15-year-old contacted police yesterday afternoon. She and Banks had been in a custody dispute and she wanted to pick up her son. But when police arrived to the home, they say Banks told officers the teen had left the residence. An hour later, officers entered the home and in an upstairs room say they found the teen unresponsive. There was a, a brief struggle between our officer and uh, that other person involved. This leading to Banks being arrested for assault and other charges. Still, many questions remain, including how the teen died. Anne Arundel County Police say Banks and other family members were home when the child was discovered. As any parent would want answers, and it takes time for us to go through this investigation, conduct interviews, and wait for the medical examiner's office to, to give a, a ruling on cause and manner of death, and then we'll proceed. We'll follow the evidence. Meanwhile, Baltimore police revealing Banks was already suspended from the force. I'm not privileged to comment about what the previous incident was about, but it was an incident that required us to suspend the officer. Uh, and now he's suspended without pay pending the outcome of the Anne Arundel County investigation. Now, the teen has not been identified. We're told, an we're told an autopsy will be performed to determine an exact cause of death. Exactly when those results will be ready is unclear. And Alexa, did Anne Arundel County Police indicate any past incidents that may have led to this officer's original suspension? So no specifics, but Anne Arundel County Police did confirm they have been called to this home in Curtis Bay before. They would not release the nature of those calls. But I did find on online court records, Banks is listed as a defendant in a domestic violence case. That case was filed about a week and a half ago and has since been listed as closed. Into why some of these offenders were back on city streets in the first place. Baltimore police have long said repeat violent offenders are largely responsible for a large majority of the violent crime we're experiencing in the city today. That notion, the very reason it's so important to look into what happens to an offender after their arrest. 25 people accused of murdering someone on the streets of Baltimore. And for 10 of them, it's not their first time being arrested for a violent crime. So why is it they were allowed back out on city streets? Fox 45 News looked into their criminal past. Devon Douglas, just last week, charged in the 2019 murder of a man on Boston Street. Online records show Douglas's criminal history spans nearly a decade. At just 18 years old, he was arrested on drug and gun charges. This, the start of a years-long pattern in the judicial system, a cycle of similar arrests, reduced sentences, and probation violations. Then there's Garrick Powell, the man charged in the high-profile killing of Safe Street's violence interrupter Dante Barksdale. At the time of his arrest, police say Powell was already on home detention for a gun charge in Anne Arundel County and at one point even removed his ankle monitor. Mayor Brandon Scott then speaking to the overall effectiveness of the home monitoring program. Clearly it's not working the way it should be. Court records also showing Powell was charged with murder in 2012 and later cleared. Another sentencing for violating probation and witness intimidation was also overturned. Finally, 18-year-old William Clinton III, one of three people charged in the shooting death of Ephraim Gordon back in May. Police confirmed Clinton fled the homicide in a van he had stolen earlier that day. Court records also show he was charged with armed robbery and armed carjacking back in 2019. Two separate crimes, both remanded to juvenile court. However, the cases were handled there not enough to stop Clinton from reoffending. Alexa Ashwell, Fox 45 News. 
it's not just city residents frustrated over water billing issues tonight. We're hearing from a resident of Baltimore County who says his water bill jumped 533 percent in one month. Jeff Abel live tonight with this story, Jeff. Well, as you know, Baltimore City handles the water bills for Baltimore County. And tonight, one county customer tells us he is drowning in a flood of frustration. Baltimore may have some of the cleanest water in the country, but its water bills have proven to be some of the dirtiest. I was like, something's wrong. You know, absolutely something's wrong. We're getting these outrageous bills. In April, Abdulio Odin received a water bill for his Windsor Mill home that sent his anxiety soaring. His normal $30 bill had jumped to more than $1,600. And I checked every pipe, every faucet, every toilet. At first, he thought there was a leak but later determined there was no leak at all. I just received the next month's water bill from the city and it was $30.07, which I automatically paid. What does that tell you? That tells me there's something wrong on their end and they need to fix it. But fixing it would prove to be a tall task. Been calling them almost every day. My wife's been calling them every day. We've been emailing them. We've been, you know, doing everything. No response. Instead of them trying to resolve it, they just don't answer you. I totaled $99,000. At a hearing earlier this year, city leaders admitted there were nine agents attempting to resolve 2,000 water billing complaints. While the city's new public works director has refused to do on-camera interviews, politicians at City Hall have been long on promises. The people should know that we will follow through on our commitment to uh, resolve all of these issues. That we understand and know. Uh, the concerns and the conditions that they currently face. And I'm committed to addressing these issues with the urgency uh, that they deserve. That promise of urgency was back in December. Now, seven months later. Well, it infuriates me. My wife's like, let's move. And she's a lifelong Maryland resident. And she doesn't want to live here. Well, tonight, the Department of Public Works assures us they are looking into this case. But so far tonight, no explanation.